as I begin, I would like for you to think about a child in your life under the age of 18 who uses the internet, okay? Can you do that? <laughs> now, I want you to keep a mental picture of that child throughout my talk, all right? The reason is because no child is immune from online sexual exploitation. Let me say that again. No child, even the one that you're thinking about under the age of 18, is immune from online sexual exploitation. In 1994, when I began my work with Enough is Enough, um, we started focusing on the problems of children have an as having access to pornography and sexual predators having access to children. And our mission became, as the first one in the United States, the first nonprofit, our mission became making the internet safer for children and families. And I'm often asked how I got involved in this issue in 1994. That's a long time ago, I know, don't count. It's 28 years. <laughs> anyway. Um, but this is at the advent of the internet. And to make a long story really short, there was a dark thread of predation in my own life. When I was six years old, the man across the street molested me. And then when I was 15, I was sexually assaulted by a young pastor. And then when I was 22, I lost my virginity in a date rape. And I had just graduated from the University of South Carolina with top honors, and the whole world was before me. And I had no idea how this was gonna impact me, but I began making a series of little left turns, and I call my 20s my prodigal 20s. Anybody have any prodigal times in their life? <laughs> yeah, I did. So, in 1987, the world that I had built for myself came crashing down all around me one headline at a time. <laughs> um, my name and my reputation were destroyed overnight in a presidential scandal that went viral. And you might say, this is before the internet, how could anything go viral? Well, it did. Um, experts say that this was the first time in history that the mainstream media went tabloid. And I was the young woman who became the sexually objectified focus of the media feeding frenzy that lasted over 15 long, torturous months. And I made the decision early on that I wanted my pain to count. I also made the decision to take the high road and not to exploit the notoriety that I was dealing with. And I didn't know where that was gonna lead. It led me to seven years underground just dropping out of sight. But my faith journey from rock bottom to becoming a pioneer of the internet safety movement in America is a story for another time. But that's how I got involved, because this talk is about our children. The home and anywhere else a child has an internet connection is where sexual predators, traffickers, and pornographers are grooming our children. This is a really important point that I want you to remember. Where kids play, predators prey. P-R-E-Y. Can you say that with me? Where children play, predators, predators prey. Good, remember that, all right? That's so important to remember. However, the good news is if we all do our part, together, we can turn the tide to protect kids in the digital world. But first, let me talk to you about two primary dangers that we deal with at Enough is Enough. Actually, we focus on all of them, but the two I'm gonna talk about tonight. First, kids have free and easy access to all kinds of pornography. It's free, they have easy access to it, one click. Multi-billion dollar industry. Common themes in today's extreme pornography, which is now mainstream, depict teen rape, incest, violence, choking, 
strangulation. In fact, about 80, a little over 80% of the content that is out there depicts some form of violence against women. This content, do you think it's protected speech? Show of hands? I mean, he thinks it's protected under the First Amendment. Okay, you guys are bashful. <laughs> All right, the kind of content that I am talking about is illegal to produce and to distribute under the federal obscenity laws. Yet it is out there, why? Because those laws have not been aggressively enforced except for a very short period of time under Attorney General Ashcroft. Therefore, kids have easy access to it. Listen to this statistic. 58% of children under the age of 14 years old consume this type of content. It can never be erased from their minds. Exposing children to this content is sexual abuse. When we did our, when we filmed our Internet Safety 101 program, I talked to a number of teenagers about the negative impact pornography had had in their lives. Courtney, who was 16 at the time, uh, she told me when she had these little cupcake earrings on, they were just kind of dangling when she was talking. She said, she said, you know, the, the boys I've been with, they expect me to act just like the girls do in that hardcore material. And Zach told me, he was 15 at the time, he said, even if you're not looking for pornography, it will find you. And in fact, we know that the stats show that that many of the children who first come across this content come across it accidentally. The second major danger that I wanna talk about is the fact, the harsh reality, that sexual predators and traffickers have easy and anonymous access to our kids. They are looking for kids online who are vulnerable to draw them in, to gain their trust, and to groom them. 40% of kids grades four through eight are talking to strangers regularly on the internet. Did you hear that? That's a big number. Let me tell you about my friend, Alicia. Alicia is now an internet safety expert, but when she was 13 years old, she met a sadistic predator who she thought was another girl her age in her chat room. He groomed her for nine long months. He abducted her from her yard, took her to his home, chained her to the basement floor in his, in his house with a locked collar around her neck. And he sexually abused and tortured her for four days. He then broadcast that abuse to all of his friends on the internet. Thankfully, it was one of those other predators who feared for Alicia's life, who contacted the FBI. The FBI found her and rescued her. And Alicia says that she's one of the lucky ones. Why? Because she survived. She survived. Now that's the picture before COVID. COVID hits. What happens? Lockdown, what happens? Kids are online more and more with e-learning. They're bored, they're spending a lot of time gaming. You know, parents are working at home and kids are just online more. And what do you think is happening? Where kids play, predators prey, right. Reports of online sexual exploitation soared exponentially. In fact, Immediately after lockdown, there was a 97% increase in online enticements of predators, uh, by predators of children. There was also, right after lockdown, a 28% increase in child sexual abuse images. We call that under the law child pornography. Let me just put that in perspective for you a minute. In 2019, pre-COVID, the New York Times reported that there were 69 million images and videos of children being sexually abused that were reported to authorities, some as young as infants and toddlers. 
That's the landscape that we're dealing with here. Just to put this in perspective. Now, in the midst of this crisis, law enforcement is constantly playing catch up. It's like whack-a-mole. They don't have nearly enough dollars to fight these multi-billion dollar criminal enterprises. It's like, it's like trying to put out a, a forest fire with a squirt gun. It's not working. Also, tech industry, with all the great that they do, some of them can sometimes be part of the problem. And then, of course, their parents and grandparents that are just overwhelmed by all of this, right? Are you feeling a little overwhelmed right now? This is the reality that our kids are living with. This is really happening. This is real children every day that are connected to the internet. However, there is hope. I truly believe that if we all work together, if we all do our part, that we can actually turn the tide. We can, we can do it if we all do it together. If we all do our part, we can't stand on the sidelines and think it's somebody else's problem, it's our problem. And we have got to protect these children's innocence. Now, think about it. It wasn't that long ago that you could drive without a seatbelt, with an open beer, with your toddler standing in the front seat next to you. <laughs> right? Not that long ago. But all that changed. Why? There was a paradigm shift in our thinking. We realized that each issue was a public health issue that impacted all of us. And the change in public opinion changed public policy. So can you see? There is hope. Why? Because the sexual exploitation of children in this digital world is a public health issue. And it's gonna take all of us to solve it. Now, at Enough is Enough, the way we deal with this, we focus on prevention, right? So our focus is a, to implement a shared responsibility between the public, the corporate community, government and law enforcement, and the faith community, each doing their part. What could a safer internet look like? Just imagine with me for a minute. Imagine all the existing laws designed to prevent the sexual exploitation of children, the, child's, uh, the child pornography laws, the obscenity laws, trafficking laws, all these existing lo laws are aggressively enforced and that there is enough funding to actually shut down these criminal enterprises. It's possible. We can do this. Also imagine that the new laws that we need, and there's some of them, there's definitely some of them, one in particular that has been something that I've been fighting for for a long time, and that is we need to get an age verification law in place to keep kids off these porn sites. Hopefully this year. Hopefully this year. Imagine big tech clean up their platforms. Imagine that they create safer by design technology right out of the box. Imagine that the smartphones and the laptops and the gaming devices and, and social media platforms, that all their safety default features are turned on rather than off. Would that help you parents? Would that help you parents? Hello. Earth to big tech. All right. <laughs> I said that on purpose. <laughs> Imagine um, that all businesses that offer public Wi-Fi voluntarily filter child sex abuse images and pornography. Just flip the switch. That sounds like a tall order, right? Well, at enough is enough, 
we convinced Starbucks and McDonald's to voluntarily filter child pornography and pornography in all their stores in the United States of America. So what about everybody else? And imagine that the victims who are suffering, imagine that they get the justice that they deserve and the help that they need to not only survive, but to thrive. And lastly, imagine that all parents and grandparents and caregivers are continually updated and educated and equipped and empowered to be the first line of defense to protect the children in their lives from all these dangers. Now, I've been doing this 28 years and, and I hear from parents all the time and they tell me the same thing. They say, Donna, I wished I had listened. I never thought that this could happen to my child. I never thought that that could happen to my grandchild. And an ounce of prevention is worth a pound of cure. So to get you started, I'm sure you're all first line of defense, but I'm just gonna give you three practical tips, all right? First of all, we call these safety rules and software tools that enough is enough. The safety rules are the common sense measures that you as the parent need to implement to protect the kids in your life on the internet. Okay, here's one of them. Talk with them regularly about what they're doing. Know and understand the platforms and the devices that they're using. If they're on the internet every day, have a conversation every day. All right? Number two, turn on the safety features on every single internet-enabled device that they use, because right now they are off. You have to turn them on. The two most important, in my opinion, are to turn on the age-appropriate filters and also monitoring technology. Most of the, you know, whether it's a, any kind of device or a social media platform, a gaming platform, they have these parental control tools, but you've got to turn them on, all right? And they work, they're good, they will help you. Technology can be your best friend if you use it, all right? And third, stay updated. At my organization, that's what we seek to do. One of the things that we seek to do is to keep people updated. You can sign up at enough.org and get free updates. And you can also learn all the safety rules and software tools and we'll just keep you updated. Everything, something, things are just new. They're, it's going so fast, I can hardly keep up with it and I'm supposed to be an expert. So, you know, it, it's, yeah, it's tough, it's hard. So, okay. Nelson Mandela, he said, history will judge us by the difference that we make in the everyday lives of our children. We've got a lot of issues dividing us right now. We do. But this is an issue that we can all unite behind. Our children's innocence is worth fighting for. So how will history judge us in this area? I believe that if we all do our part, we can make the internet safer for children. Imagine that. Imagine that. Thank you.